Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. The text for our sermon this morning is a portion of our gospel lesson recorded for us in the Gospel of St. Matthew. And we read verses 13 through 16 once again. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its flavor, how will it become salty again? Then it is no good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled on by people. You are the light of the world. A city located on a hill cannot be hidden. People do not light a lamp and put it under a basket. No, they put it on a stand and it gives light to all who are in the house. In the same way, let your light shine in people's presence so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let us pray. Dear Lord God, we ask that you be with us today as we hear your word. Help us to understand who we are because of you, salt and light in this bland world of darkness. Motivate us by your love to live out our lives according to your word, in gratitude to you, that the gospel might be brought to those living in darkness. Sanctify us by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Dear fellow redeemed, have you ever heard of the Salt Life Company before? I know it's not all that popular up here in Minnesota, but where I used to live down in Florida, it seemed like it was everywhere. Logos on t-shirts, bumper stickers, everywhere we looked, it seemed like I'd find this Salt Life logo. What is Salt Life? Well, it's a company that produces apparel for people that do things at the beach. So pretty much anything on the beach, whether it's swimming, whether it's surfing, fishing, you name it. If it has to do with the beach, you better believe they have clothing for you, apparel for you, and it's under that brand, Salt Life. The company really encourages their customers to embrace who they are, that they're beach people. They're people that think about going to the beach when they're at work, and every moment that they have free, they want to go and to do their favorite activity there. So to really embrace the Salt Life. To be honest with you, when I first saw that logo, I wondered if maybe it was a Christian company. Maybe a company that connected its message with our text for today, as Jesus calls us the salt of the earth. Apparently, there is no connection. But it's kind of an interesting thing for us to think about. As Jesus calls us in our text for today, the salt of the earth, to really embrace who we are and to live out that salt life for him. Last week, we began the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, and we covered the Beatitudes. And it's good for us to remember, though, who Jesus is talking about in this sermon, or who he's talking to specifically. In our previous lesson, we'd been told that Jesus was speaking to the disciples, to his followers, to Christians. So really, they're the ones that he's speaking to. So people like us, people that believe in him as our Savior, what does he call us? You are the salt of the earth. You know, back in Jesus' day, as even today, salt is a very valuable commodity. What do people use it for? It's used for the preservation of meat. It can be used even for medicinal purposes and especially for flavoring food, right? That's the aspect of salt that Jesus especially focuses on in our text for today, that salt gives flavor to a bland food and to a bland world. Have you ever thought of a Christian in that way, though, as maybe someone who provides flavor to a bland world? We probably think of Christians as the opposite. Christians are quite often considered to be dull and boring, right? And the things that are considered spicy or exciting or salty are, are maybe things that are directly opposed to Christianity. I think of things that are sexy and seductive are considered spicy and hot. I think of my time serving in the U.S. Navy. Those that went to many different ports of call along the world, seasoned sailors that could drink with the best of them and swore like sailors, well, they were the ones that were considered salty. Not Christians, though, right? Yet Jesus calls Christians the salt of the earth in our text for today. How is it that we provide flavor in this world? Well, we are different than the rest of the world. As the scriptures reveal to us that 
everyone born into this world is born in sin and born in unbelief. And we don't desire to come to God. We don't desire to follow his will, nor can we do so, as the scriptures say, by our nature. Really, the world is turned against God. And yet God has done something incredible for every one of us. He's brought about a change in our lives. He's brought us to the truth of his word. He's shined the light of his truth in our lives to show us our sinfulness, but also especially to show us our Savior, Jesus Christ. To reveal to us what he has done, to pay for our sins and to guarantee every one of us a certain hope of heaven. He's told us that this is really new life that he has given us, making us different from the rest of the world, having this new life in Christ. We don't often want to be different, though. We often want to just follow along with the ways of the world, the ways of our sinful flesh. We don't want to stick out like a, a sore thumb, right? So much easier to do just as the world encourages us. Do whatever feels good to you. It's kind of a, a self-centered focus. Whether it comes to our marriages, if we feel like it's not the same, the love isn't there as it once was, the world tells us, well, if you're not getting what you hoped out of marriage, well, just leave it. Rather than to do the difficult thing and to stay to try to work in love with your spouse and with your children. When it comes to the simple pleasures of this life, the world tells us, oh, just go for it. Indulge. Do whatever feels good to your flesh rather than resisting those things. But Jesus encourages us to be different, to be salt and light in the world. The famed shock rocker Alice Cooper is quoted as once saying, drinking beer is easy. Trashing your hotel room is easy, but being a Christian, that's a tough call. That's real rebellion. It's kind of interesting to think about, isn't it? The ways of this world, it's easy to fall in line with our sinful flesh, isn't it? But to live different, to live in the light of the gospel, to live according to God's word, that's tough. It's real rebellion. It's living differently, isn't it? Jesus points out how tragic it is when Christians lose their saltiness in this world. He makes the point that people don't flavor their food with salt because they're expecting that it's not going to make any difference or change. They expect that that food's going to taste different. It's going to be flavorful. So also, if somebody builds a city up on a hill, they don't expect that nobody's going to see it, that it's going to be hidden, but that everyone's going to be seeing it. When somebody lights a lamp, they don't do so just to hide it under a basket, but they do so so that the light is, is seen throughout the room, and throughout the darkness. So also, God has made us salt and light for this purpose, to provide flavor and light in this bland world of darkness. But often we fail. You know, I've often wondered the, the question, how many people, even for myself as a pastor, have I really brought them the truth of God's word and the light of the gospel for the very first time. Certainly there are many people that I proclaim God's word to on a regular basis, but how many people were unbelievers and I brought to them the precious gospel message, the truth of God's word? You can probably only think of a handful of cases like that. And then I think to myself, how many more people have I perhaps turned away from God's word and the gospel? Turned away from those things because of things that I've said or because of things that I've done. So that people say, why in the world would I ever want to be a Christian and be a hypocrite like that guy? But there's incredible comfort for us in our lesson for today. We look at Jesus' words carefully. He doesn't say this. He doesn't say, you should be the salt of the earth. You ought to be the light of the world. What does he say? He says, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Even despite our sin, even despite our failures to live out our lives as salt and light in the world, he says that's what we are because he has made us that. That's incredibly comforting for us. 
We know everything that God has done for us. Oh, he has made us different. And he has done it especially through his son, Jesus Christ. As God has given us Jesus to fulfill the law perfectly in our place. He's given us Jesus who has forgiven all of our sins, even our failures to, to be salt and light, to be a difference in our world, to live for him. He washes away all of those sins. But God has taken it a step further, hasn't he? He hasn't just won forgiveness on the cross. He has also brought that forgiveness into our lives and hearts by his grace through the work of the Holy Spirit that has converted unbelievers like us to come to know the truth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And if you ever doubt this, go no further than the baptismal font. We know that there, God has brought us to water in the Word. And through that water in the Word, really has washed away all of our sins as He has promised, as He has brought us the Holy Spirit who does create faith and has created faith in our hearts and lives. And He's made us different marking us there as his own dear children. In John chapter 8, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. He points out that all who believe in him have the light of life. We have the light that Jesus is, that Jesus provides. That light is inside of us, and it emanates from us. Stories told of a Sunday school teacher who one day in class wanted to emphasize to her students how important it is to believe in Jesus. She said, if you believe in Jesus Christ as your Savior, that he died on the cross to pay for your sins, you will go to heaven, children. There was a little girl who raised her hand, and the teacher called on her, and she said, well, teacher, I, I do believe Jesus died and paid for my sins. I do believe that I'm going to heaven why am I still here? Why are we still here? We know the truth. We know what God has done for us. We know of his grace in Christ. Why hasn't he taken us home to be with him in heaven yet? Well, part of the reason is to live as salt and light in the world. And Jesus describes the way that we do that. As he uses that analogy of light in our lesson for today, let your light shine in people's presence so that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. He points to the good works that we do as Christians. Good works that are fruits of our faith that really emanate in the world around us. St. Francis of Assisi is credited with saying, Preach the gospel at all times. When necessary, use words. It's kind of an interesting quote, isn't it? Preach the gospel at all times when necessary. Use words. It's really pointing out the fact that each and every one of us, our lives preach a sermon to the people around us. It's been said when we go to church every morning, it doesn't go unnoticed by our neighbors, even on a day like this, maybe in the middle of a snowstorm. Where are they going in the middle of all this? preaches a, a message to those around us. As we think about the way that we act in mercy and love toward each other, as we care for one another, as, as we're generous, as we're wanting to help one another, all of those things don't go unnoticed by the world. They see those things. And it preaches a sermon to them concerning our faith and our Savior. But it is important for us not just to desire to live as Christians with our actions, but also to proclaim God's word of truth, too. We know in the scriptures that God tells us that he does not hear the prayers of unbelievers. So why would the praise of unbelievers be good for God? Why would he desire those things? Certainly the, the praise that is truly pre pleasing to God is not simply the praise of an unbeliever, but the praise of a believer. And how important it is for us not just to act in love and mercy and kindness and generosity, but also for us to proclaim the reason why. To proclaim our Savior, Jesus. 
after I shared this story with you before, but I think it's a worthwhile one for us to consider again. Many years ago when I was in seminary here in town up at Bethany Lutheran Theological Seminary, I worked at the local Home Depot here in town and worked overnight shift, uh, stocking shelves. And every night we had the task of putting away all of the boxes that came in on the trucks that day. And I, I enjoyed my work. I enjoyed the challenge of it all. I remember over the course of time, probably about three years or so into working there, one of the assistant managers came up to me and she remarked this privately. She said, why do you work so hard? And I kind of shrugged it off and said, well, all the guys work hard. We, we all try to do a, a good job. And she said, no, 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 you're different. Why do you work so hard? And again, I probably couldn't take a compliment from her and kind of shrugged it off again. Looking back on that, I, I think about the opportunity that I missed there. A tremendous opportunity to tell her why I worked so hard. It wasn't simply because I was working for the good of the company or working to earn a paycheck. It's because I was working to please my God. Please my God that who has done so many things for me that I desired to follow the rules, to obey the managers above me, to do a good job and to work hard. It was all because of my faith in my Savior Jesus Christ. That was the motivation for me. What an opening that I had to share that with her. God also provides many opportunities in our own lives. As we carry out our work to the best of our abilities, as we live as salt and light in the world, it can open up so many doors and opportunities so people might also ask each and every one of us, why are you so different? So that we can tell them because of Jesus and what he has done for me. You know, I think the Salt Life Company is really on to something. Not just trying to get people to buy their product, but to get people to embrace who they are as beach people. God encourages us today in his word to embrace who we are in Christ, who he has made us to be through the power of his Holy Spirit, salt and light in the world. And to live out our lives, to live that salt life that he has laid out for us, desiring to show others our Savior Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. Amen. I invite the congregation to please rise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, forevermore.